When it comes down to picking my favorite coasters, I tend to prefer wood coasters over steel. Here's a list of some of my favorite wood coasters that I've had the opportunity to experience. I love roller coasters. Wood coasters though can be an interesting experience. Because of the way they respond to weather and everything, the ride on them can change from day to day, sometimes even over the course of a day. Maintenance affects them much more than it does on steel coasters. Whether they're greased or not, it's amazing how many parks don't grease their wood roller coaster tracks. Six Flags and Cedar Fair, I'm looking at you. If a coaster isn't greased, it's gonna make a big difference in how it rides. So you may have times where you get an incredible ride on a wood coaster, and the next day it may not be so good. But what do I really like in a coaster? Airtime. If you're not familiar with that word, it's basically the feeling of weightlessness, being kind of lifted up out of your seat, and it might even make it feel like you're about to be thrown out even though you're not. Love airtime. So you'll notice on my list of coasters here, I've got a lot of them that give a lot of airtime. Now, these are pretty much in the order that I've had the chance to ride them. They're not in an order of favorites because it's tough for me to pick. My favorite coaster is usually the one I'm sitting on at the moment, but these tend to stand out above the rest. With all that said, here are 13 of my favorite wood coasters, along with a couple extra honorable mentions. The first one I want to mention is the Giant Dipper at Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. This coaster has a lot of special memories for me, I actually went to college in a little town called Scotts Valley that's just outside of Santa Cruz, so we spent a whole lot of time down at the boardwalk. Built in 1924, it's a classic seaside coaster. It's not huge, it's not fast compared to a lot of modern day coasters, but it is just a great fun ride. It also happens to be the site of my first date with my wife. We had gone down with a few friends and all decided to get on the roller coaster. She didn't know what to expect. It starts off with this nice dark tunnel. And next thing I know, as we get the tunnel, she's grabbed a hold of my arm in fear, at least until we come out of the tunnel. Then she kind of looks over at me a little embarrassed and had a great time. It's a fun ride. It's relatively smooth. It's got some wonderful little pops of air. And it's one of those kind of coasters I call a dumb grin coaster. You can't help but have a dumb grin on your face when you get off. Number two would be the Texas Giant the original Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. This was a huge wood coaster for its time. Built by Summers and Din, who usually build really rough rides, it was a great, fast, intense ride, at least when I got to ride it 20 years ago. Loved riding that coaster. You take two, three rides on it, and it might knock your breath out of you a little bit, but it didn't hurt. It's not really there anymore. It has since been rebuilt by the Rocky Mountain Coaster Company as the new Texas Giant, which I get to ride here probably about the time you're watching this video at the end of May. I'm looking forward to it. My next memorable one, number three, would be Roar at Six Flags Marine World. Just a basic, classic, twisting wood roller coaster. Relatively smooth, fast, lots of air. It was just a great ride. This is the one coaster that they closed and gave the Rocky Mountain treatment to that I'm really disappointed that they did because it was a really good fun coaster the way it was there really wasn't any need to make it over haven't been on the new version yet I've heard good things but I just really enjoyed the old roar at Six Flags Marine World which is now Six Flags Discovery Kingdom they can't keep anything the same can they number four and if I had to pick a list of three or four favorites this would easily be one of them would be the Phoenix at Knobles. Originally built at Playland Park in New York in 1948, they moved it to Knobles in the 1980s, I believe 1985, and just a fantastic coaster. Smooth, fast. I got to ride it during an event called Phoenix Fall Fun Fest at the park. Nice October fall night. Coaster enthusiasts come in, dress up in costumes, have a lot of fun, and it was flying. It, honestly, it felt like it was off the tracks more than it was on it. Just an incredible ride. Twister in the same park is also a great ride if you like the side laterals, 
but Phoenix just blew me away. It's a coaster I haven't been on since 2001, but I would dearly love to get back and have a chance to ride it again. Number five was actually part of that same trip that I got to ride Phoenix, and that was Leap the Dips at Lake Bond. Leap the Dips is actually the oldest wood roller coaster left in the United States, built in 1901. It's a side friction coaster, which means it doesn't actually have wheels on the bottom to help hold you on. It's got rails on the side. It has a top speed of like 20 miles an hour, but you're sitting on a bench with no seat belts, and there's a little bit to hold on to, but not very much. It's a basic figure eight layout with little dips in it, but it is fun. Classic, neat roller coaster. If you ever get the opportunity to go ride it, go take a run on Leap the Dips. Number six, Ghost Rider at Knott's. For a long time when this first opened, it was easily the best wooden roller coaster in the West Coast. Tons of airtime, tons of speed, intense roller coaster. It was a coaster that I would just love that if I could have sat on all day and ridden over and over, I would have. Coaster enthusiasts flocked all over the country to ride it at the time. Because it was so intense, it did tend to get a little bit rougher as it aged. Recently, Great Coasters National came in and retracted and redid the trains. And I've heard great things that's back to its old, fast, smooth, wonderful self again. And look out for the drop on it. The seventh drop was just a great drop where it would drop out from under you. And it was like the train was gone and you were still sitting there. You were in it, but you were up out of your seat. One of the best moments of airtime anywhere. Number seven. This one may surprise some people. This is actually a Cedar Point roller coaster and it's not Mean Streak. Blue Streak. Blue Streak is an older roller coaster. It's not real fancy. It's not real big. It's basically a lift hill, down some dips and drops, turn around, come back, do it again. Not a lot to it, but just lots of little pops of air. Not a rough ride, but smooth. As terrible as this sounds, but when I was at Cedar Point in 2002 getting to actually ride everything, it may have actually been my favorite coaster in the park. Yeah, I liked it as much as I liked Millennium Force, so take that. Again, it's another what I call a dumb grin coaster. You couldn't help but have a dumb grin on your face when you're riding it. Just loads of fun and tame enough you can ride with anybody, but exciting enough for people who like thrills. Number eight, The Beast at King's Island. Now, I only got to manage a couple rides on Beast, and that was in 2002 as part of that spring trip across Ohio. But it was a great coaster. People talk about the Beast at night and what an incredible ride it is, and I didn't get to experience that. But you can kind of tell with the long ride and out into the woods and speeding by the trees, you feel like you're flying. It's got a couple great helixes on it, some great airtime. Just a fantastic coaster. Hopefully one of these days I'll get some night rides on it. Number nine, Thunder Run at Kentucky Kingdom. When I got to ride it, it was again part of that big Ohio swing that I did in 2002. It was a Six Flags Park at the time and just a great coaster. Smooth, fast, tons of air. Anything you could ask for in a coaster, it had. Had a wonderful pullover from the back seat and just a great ride. We had a lot of fun riding it. A lot of fun kind of making fun of some of the other parts of the park, but Thunder Run was a great ride. Easily better than Twisted Sister that was also in the park. Number 10, Viper at Six Flags Great America. Six Flags Great America as part of that 2002 trip was a wonderful visit for me. I grew up going to the Great America Park in California, and so for me it felt like going back to my childhood in a lot of ways. But there wasn't anything like Viper out in California. Viper is a big wood roller coaster modeled after the Cyclones, easily the best of the clones of the New York Cyclone that I've ever been on. Smooth, fast, great pops of air on it. At the time in 2002, some of the coaster enthusiasts would do something really stupid, and I say that for a good reason, where we wouldn't put our lap bars all the way down. It had seat belts as well, but we would put a lap bar down about two, three clicks or so. Viper cured me of that. <laughs> the guy I was riding with at the time, we hit one of the bumps and we felt like we were flying and we were diving and reaching for the bars. I didn't put my lap bar up like that anymore. Parks aren't gonna let you do that now anyways, not since a real tragic accident happened shortly after that. Don't ride with your lap bars up like that. Make sure they're down so they're holding you in. That way you don't do anything stupid like we did. Fantastic ride, though. I'd love to get another chance to go ride Viper again. Number 11, the New Mexico Rattler at Cliffs in Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
Here's another one that it's not a huge coaster, but it's fast, it's quick, it's got great airtime, it's relatively smooth, and it was just a fun, fun coaster. Got to ride that one in 2004 when I was moving across the country and we'd planned the moving trip to stop at various places. New Mexico Rattler was easily one of the highlights. The park itself is nice. It's a family park. It's like a large entertainment center as opposed to necessarily a theme park. But it was just a great coaster that made it well worth the stop all by itself. Number 12. Also part of that 2004 trip, I got to ride a coaster that had just opened that year and it became the highlight, and that's Thunderhead at Dollywood. At the time, it was incredibly smooth, it was fast, it had lots of air. As part of the moving trip, I was there with one of my college friends and my two kids, and we must have rode that coaster a dozen times in two days. Just an incredibly fun-filled ride. There's actually one spot where the train actually roars through the station as a pass-through, and you get to wave at it while you're waiting in line and getting on and off. Just a fantastic ride. In fact, that's Thunderhead right there. That's my picture of it. So yes, I really like that coaster. Number 13 was one that used to be down in Florida and it's another one that is no longer there. I'm honestly very disappointed in that. And that's the Dania Beach Hurricane. The Dania Beach Hurricane was attached to a miniature golf and go-kart place. It was separate, but still part of it. And it was easily the best wood roller coaster in Florida. We went a couple times to the Florida Coaster Club. We have a big gathering there. And we would basically be able to ride this coaster over and over and over and over and over again. It had great spots of airtime. It was smooth. It wasn't scary. My kids loved this coaster. It was well worth a two to three hour trip just to ride it and not do anything else. Although, of course, we also attacked the go-karts and other stuff while we were there. Sadly, it didn't do great financially, especially when Florida's market crashed, and that kind of took the hurricane with it. Number 14. If you're in coaster enthusiast circles, you will hear about this roller coaster, and that's the Voyage at Holiday World. The Voyage is one of the longest wood roller coasters, one of the highest wood roller coasters. It is an incredible, fantastic ride. It's a long ride out into the woods. It's a crazy ride back. You are flying at crazy speeds, getting tossed around back and forth. Lots of air, lots of intensity. It is easily one of the most intense roller coasters I've ever been on. Now I say intense, not rough. You do need to hold on for it. It's not a coaster I ride hands up, even though I do that most because you do need to brace because it's gonna toss you around. It's not gonna hurt. It doesn't shake violently like some coasters do. It's not gonna cause pain, but it will take your breath away. Fantastic ride. Again, it would be up in that top little echelon of three or four coasters. So that gives you a look at my favorite wood roller coasters. There are a couple that I wanna give an honorable mention to because they're like wood coasters, but they're not necessarily wood coasters anymore. Their structure is still wood. They're basically based on a wood coaster style, but they're actually steel track. It's what we would call a hybrid. So it's like wood, but not wood, but it's not steel. And it, it's kind of this weird beast all its own. And the first one was actually at the park that I used to work at. And that was Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. Great, intense roller coaster. One of the steepest drops you're going to find on a wood coaster. Fast. It's got a couple of crazy elements where you're upside down, but you're not upside down. You're doing a corkscrew on it, which was incredibly new for a wood style roller coaster. Lots of air. My real only complaint with Outlaw Run was I wish it was a little bit longer. You hit the brake run and you're just wanting a little bit more. My other honorable mention is one by the same company and also a revamp. And that was Twisted Colossus of Six Flags Magic Mountain. I used to love the original Colossus. The original Colossus was a great ride. Fast and fun and furious. And then over the years, Six Flags just didn't take care of it. They didn't grease the track. Instead of taking care of the track, they started replacing it with steel I-beam. And it just became a slow, plodding, poor remembrance of itself. Well, Magic Mountain finally decided to do something real about it and had Rocky Mountain Coaster come in and basically completely redo it into what is now Twisted Colossus. 
Outside a little bit of the structure, it is nothing like it used to be. Now it's fast, it's smooth, it twists, it turns, it races again, it duels with itself. It has spots where it's going upside down over itself. I mean, it's really cool when you're looking up and there's another train of coaster riders right over your head. Just a really neat, incredible ride. I got one ride during its opening year. We were there right at park opening on a slow day, got there immediately, took our ride, and when we came off and the park had only been open 20 minutes maybe, it was over an hour wait already. And we had lots more we wanted to do. So I only got the one ride, but I hope that at some point I'll be able to get back and get more. So there's my list of some of my favorite wood coasters. You can kind of see now what I like. I like wood. I like airtime. You can see that there's some that I didn't mention that a lot of people really like, like Boulder Dash and El Toro. Those aren't there because I haven't been on them yet. They're very hard for me to comment on. I haven't been up along the East Coast in New England area and several other places. So if I missed yours, forgive me, but tell me what they are in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your favorites are. And hey, maybe some of your worst too. I'll put together a list like that at some point. Don't forget to like and share. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching.